How's it going, everybody? Daner here with North Central Coins, and welcome back to another episode of the most rare and valuable coins in Canada. Today, we're going to be discussing a dime that can be worth thousands of dollars that you probably had no idea even existed. Because this coin only has a few known examples, its value is only exceeded by its rarity. And even though chances are you won't ever find one of these floating out in the wilds of circulation or in your pocket change, crazier things have happened and you should never say never. In this video, we will explore the historical context surrounding the production of this incredibly rare 10 cent coin and also delve into why it holds such importance in Canadian numismatic history. Additionally, we will discuss the distinguishing and identifying features, its significance among collectors, and its potential value if you are ever to find a legitimate example. Before I do get into this, I would really appreciate if you guys would hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also hit that bell notification so you can follow along with my new videos as they are being released. Also, make sure to stay to the end of the video if you would like to find out what is the maximum amount of money you can get for this coin if you were ever to stumble upon one. And then, what do you say we get into it and discuss the 1967 Canadian mackerel pattern dime? Let's get it, guys. During the year 1967, the rising price of silver forced a reduction in the silver content in Canadian 10 and 25 cent coins from 80% to 50%, although some coins were still minted in 80% during 1967. The two different compositions of the Canadian 1967 coins are not distinguishable by eye. 1967 and 1968 are transitional years for the amount of silver commonly used in Canadian coins and the composition was eventually changed to pure nickel in the year 1968 with around a third of the dimes and quarters being produced and composed of 50% silver for that final year. The transition from silver to nickel composition in Canadian coins during the years 1967 and 1968 was a significant change in the country's currency. This shift marked a move towards a more cost-effective and durable material for coin production, ultimately impacting the value and collectability of these coins for numismatists. In the year 1967, the Canadian Mint made commemorative designs for each of the different denominations, and although they are incredibly beautiful and the dimes and quarters are silver, they usually aren't worth too much money. But believe it or not, there is an incredibly rare dime that has flown under the radar of most collectors and it is found on the 1967 mackerel dime. In the year 1967, the Canadian Mint began preparations for the switch to the nickel composition for its coinage the following year. This was a very experimental time at the Canadian Mint and there was also a heavy workload as the full run of 1967 commemorative coinage was no doubt a huge undertaking at the time and some of the coins in the series such as the Rock Dove Penny had very large mintage figures so it would have definitely been a strain on mint employees. Now let's briefly discuss pattern or trial coins. Most pattern essays or trial coins were not officially approved for release but produced to evaluate a proposed coin design, a new or revised coinage, or to test the metal composition, dies, or structure of a new coin. And when it comes to pattern trial and essay coins, usually there will only be a few known examples of the piece, if any, and they usually don't leave the mint facility unless intended, and they are quickly snatched up, graded, and accounted for. I don't want to say that there's a 0% chance that you will ever stumble across one of these in the wild, but if you were, it would definitely be a gift from the coin gods. The thing that makes this coin great, as opposed to some other errors and varieties, is how easy it would be to identify. Silver coins are non-magnetic and nickel coins will stick to a magnet. The thing that makes this 1967 mackerel trial piece so special is that it is actually composed of nickel instead of all the other mackerel dimes which were made of silver that year. This is most likely the result of experimentation by the Canadian Mint to test nickel planchettes or maybe they planned on releasing some of the commemorative coins in nickel as well but regardless it's another great legendary coin to have on your radar. If you do ever happen to have a 1967 mackerel dime that appears like it may not be silver or has a more dull tone all you have to do is hit it with a magnet and if it sticks you have one of the rarest Canadian dimes in existence. 
Another identifying factor that makes this coin different from its silver counterparts is its weight. This nickel planchette pattern will weigh 2.1 grams and the silver mackerels should weigh 2.33 grams. There are actually a few other similar cases of coins where the Canadian mint will experiment and these holy grail pieces are born. One other good example would be the 1967 Bobcat Quarter, which is pretty much the exact same case as this dime. It was a pattern or trial piece struck on a nickel planchette, and it can be worth some really good money as well. Some of the details and specifications for this coin, the overall mintage for the 1967 mackerel dime is 32,309,135. The trial pattern piece is composed of 99% nickel. It has a weight of 2.1 grams, a diameter of 18.03 millimeters. It is magnetic. The face value is 10 cents and it is in metal alignment as is the standard for most Canadian coins. Now that we've discussed some of the history and how to identify this coin, what do you say we get into the value of this extremely rare piece of Canadian numismatic history? If you were to ever send this coin in to be graded, it would be classified as a specimen and get an SP designation as that is the designation most Canadian pattern or trial coins will receive. So as I mentioned earlier on, there are only a few known examples currently for this coin. If you were to find one and it scored an SP63, it would be worth around $3,000. It can be worth around $4,000 for an SP64. And this bad boy can be worth all the way up to $5,000 for an SP65, which as far as I can tell is the highest graded known example currently. If you were to ever find one and it scored any higher, you would probably see some pretty big price jumps and I would not doubt that the price of this coin starts to double and if it hits around an SP67, it could easily be worth anywhere from 15 to $20,000. So even though there is not too many of these known to exist and very few of them probably left the mint facility, it is definitely still a good one to have on your radar. I have found 1967 Macro Dimes coin roll hunting and in my pocket change before, they are still out there in the wild and you can definitely fish them out if you keep your eyes open. What do you guys think about the 1967 pattern mackerel dime? What would you ever do if you found a legitimate example or if you have ever found any coins similar to the one discussed in this video, let me know down in the comments. Also, I would really appreciate if you guys would hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also hit that bell notification so you can stay up to date with my new videos as they are being released. But I think that is pretty much going to do it for this one, folks. So thank you so, so much for watching, everybody. But until the next one, peace out and have a good one, y'all.